Hello there, gentlemen. I'm going to present you with a topic today. She would bring a spoon to the Super Bowl if it were your mother. Ignore the fat mom jokes. The issue at hand now is the widespread acceptance of women with large breasts. Beginning in the early 2000s, when accepting obese women as the norm became the norm, everything changed. During this time, a lot of big man apparel firms rose to prominence. It helped people accept beauty standards and gave bigger women the freedom to do better than society expected of them. I can only describe this movement as overweight people accepting the end of the world. It's safe to assume that companies are the only ones profiting from these movements, as it undoubtedly does not help women who are at risk for diabetes. A woman who had just given birth was characterized in the New York Times Magazine as feeling as lovely as ever when she stood in front of a mirror. But I worry that she is just scared that she might still be close to her weight before she gets pregnant, even as she makes an effort to feel good about herself. It's safe to say that the scenario only benefits one individual. Despite the fact that the business benefits from her being overweight and the woman is attempting to feel good about herself, the healthcare sector is also booming, not only clothing retailers, Obesity rates have increased over the previous 15 years and are to blame for 300,000 deaths annually in the United States alone. The Nottingham Post reports that amounts to nearly 1% of the entire American population annually. In the book, an obese lady can provide you all kinds of justifications for why her weight isn't a major concern, and might say that everyone dies at some point or that sometimes marathon runners die in their 20s. Does it really matter, woolen fabric? The truth is that your heart beats more rapidly as you gain weight. Additionally, there is extra strain on your joints. Before you know it, your doctor is telling you that you need a pacemaker to make sure your organs get enough oxygen to keep your weight steady. Beyond health, we observe how this mistreatment of the human body has evolved into a beauty norm. All activism truly began in 1973. Doomy Free Spirit and Sarah Fisher founded Fat Underground, a feminist collective. As an ineffectual treatment for a condition that doesn't exist, they later came up with the name diet. They don't believe that being overweight is an issue or that their options should be restricted. We've all heard the phrase that activist groups have created. Big Beautiful, sometimes known as BB, aims to make obese women feel confident in their own flesh. Over time, fat lady publications were created for ladies to read while trying to stay balanced while using the restroom. More voices were heard in activist groups as the movement expanded into Europe in the 1980s. Since then, obesity has evolved into the social norm and turned into a very common niche for women to find themselves in. Feminism's subfield of female activism naturally, all the other things that fit within this category, also became popular when feminism did, similar to ideals of beauty for obese women. Due to its growing popularity, institutions have started studying fat. I hope to be kidding. But that's what we get when we let large corporations take advantage of complacency and dwindling aesthetic standards. Since these women don't frequent the gym, they want to be perceived as being hurt yet still a good candidate for mating. If someone attempts to sleep with the hippos, they'll simply end up in Africa. People are now embarrassed about their bad habits because Lizzo is on the cover of Vogue or whatever. Showing overweight people in magazines is normalizing bad habits because it makes people feel bad about their bad habits. I can finally enjoy this Big Mac in peace, thank goodness. Thank you, Lizzo. It must be unsettling to accept anything like this, because it's an indicator of social decline. Women who work out their buttocks and sculpt their bodies deserve to be praised, rather than the custom of giving someone a Michael and Man-like figure. This has reached a tipping point for women, and it's probably not unusual for them to have over 100 passionate partners, blue hair covered in tattoos, and be overweight rather than acting like Patrick Starr and ordering the murder of a fat woman. We ought to support women in slaying unrestrained demons by telling these women to consume their body weight in food each day. In the past, statues made of the slender bodies of ladies were commonplace. However, I am concerned about the monstrosities represented by marble statues. Imagine what Lizzo appeared to be. At the end of the day, it comes down to playing the victim once again, just as in any other sport. Everyone has pretty much the same chances to make the most of each day, use their brain power for the greater good of humanity, seek spiritual perfection, and eventually take care of their goddamn bodies. If you aren't doing at least one of these on a daily basis, you're not making the most of every day, and you unavoidably begin to adopt a victim mindset. 
These ladies believe that everyone is out to get them. When they look down at their stomachs, they realize they have eaten it. That's all I got for you today, guys so be well. And what you think about the normalization of obesity? Is this only another pretext for being lazy? To give your support, click the thumbs up button. Please leave a comment below if you would like to see more videos like this one. Be sure to give it to the guys who are in the most precarious need of it.